Video lesson 12.4. Uh, this is another coordinate proof, and we're going to specifically look at rhombuses and squares for this one. So uh, again, just if you're going through the process like we did for some of the other ones, uh, if we're trying to prove that a quadrilateral is a rhombus, uh, we could have multiple ways to do it. Uh, first way is that we can use the distance formula to show that all four sides are congruent. All right. Uh, again, subsequently, if you already know that it's a parallelogram, which a lot of times they do have that information, which is great. If that's the case, then I just have to show that consecutive sides are congruent, All right? which would be a little bit of a shortcut, a little bit faster process um, from there. Uh, or the other alternative is we could use uh, the midpoint and the slope formula, and we can show that the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. Uh, which is one of the ones that I like to use the, uh, more often. Uh, once again, if you already know that it is a parallelogram, we have a little bit of a faster way because uh, they already tells you that it's a di uh, the diagonals bisect each other. So all we got to do is show that they're perpendicular, a.k.a. we just have to worry about the slope formula part, which would make it even faster. All right, so let's look at example number one. All right, first off, uh, notice they do tell me it's a parallelogram, so that's good. Let's plot our points here. Uh, so we've got A at 0, 06, we've got B at 4, negative 1, we've got C at negative 4, 0, and D is at negative 8, 7. All right, let's use our straight edge here, connect the dots, get ourselves a visual picture here of what we're looking for. All right, so again, they're telling me that it's at least a parallelogram because they told me that part, which is good. So now I can go through. So if I was doing it in like part A uh, using the distance formula, right, again, I can go to here and all I got to worry about is that the fact that they are consecutive uh, sides are in fact congruent to each other. So I can use the distance formula to show two, any two consecutive sides. So I'm going to choose uh, AD and uh, DC here. So if I can show that those two are equal in length, since it's already a parallelogram, that means all four sides are going to be equal. So let's use the distance formula for this. So AD is going to equal. So we've got here, so we're using A and D for this one. So again, difference in the X is squared, difference in the Y squared, sum of the two things, uh, square root of that. So 0 plus negative 8, all squared. Uh, I'm sorry, minus, not plus, minus negative 8, plus uh, the difference in the Ys all squared. So if I do this, let's see, that's 8 squared is 64 plus 1 squared is just 1, so that gets me a square root of 65. Again, even if you can simplify it, all we're looking for is that they are equal, so I don't have to worry about that part in this particular situation. Uh, so now let's look at DC, which would be the consecutive side. Uh, again, now we're looking at D and C. For this part, so this one and this one. So again, difference in the x values, all squared, plus the difference in the y values, all squared. So negative 4 minus and minus again is plus, so that's going to be just 4, ends up being negative 4 squared, I'm sorry, positive 4 squared, which is 16. Uh, we've got negative 7 squared, just uh, plus 49, and 16 plus 49 is also. Six, square root of 65. So again, we have both of these values being uh, equal, right? So therefore, right, lengths are equal, right? That's what that showed us. So again, we need a sentence that ties this all together. So I can say that um, since ABCD is a parallelogram, with consecutive sides being congruent, then A, B, C, D must be a rhombus. So again, all we are doing here is this sentence is kind of tying all the pieces that we did and subsequently giving me a, a specific reason as to why it is or is not whatever they asked to find. An alternative way for part B would be using the diagonals, right? So the other version of that 
would be, again, to use this second one here, the midpoint and the slope formula to show that you have a perpendicular bisector. But again, if we already have a parallelogram, we just got to show that they are perpendicular to each other. So again, uh, if you want to, we can just you know draw it in here so you can have a general sense of what we're looking for. So those are my diagonals, right? So I'm looking here to prove that those are perpendicular to each other. So I'm looking for slopes. So the slope of, and I'll do AC first, is equal to, and again, we can, on graph paper, so we can just count the boxes. We can go vertically and uh, horizontally, so rise over run, right? So that's going to be a rise of 6 and a run of 4, which simplifies the 3 over 2. Uh, then we got a slope here of the other diagonal, which in this case is uh, DB. Again, DB or BB, BD doesn't matter. All right, so now I'm going from D to B or B to D, same thing. Again, uh, on the graph paper here, I can just count the boxes, or you can use the slope formula. But I see here that I got I go down, in this case, down 8, and I can go right 12 there. So negative 8 over 12. And if again, if I simplify this, I get negative 2 over 3. So again, utilizing this information, we notice here that these are opposite reciprocals. All right, therefore, we can say that AC is perpendicular to DB, right? That's what that sentence says. So again, if I'm tying this all together with my sentence here, we can say that since ABCD is a parallelogram, right? and the diagonals are perpendicular to each other, then A, B, C, D is, or must be, I should say, a rhombus because the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors to each other. So again, just another variation of how I can kind of word that in an alternative method here. Uh, but again, that's the general sense. Again, I don't have to do both of those. I could just do one of them. But you can see how uh, the, you know, the information will vary. Again, a lot of times it's going to be dependent on what information you have. Um, if it's up to you, it really doesn't matter. But that's the idea, all right? Uh, give them the, the work uh, and then subsequently give a sentence or two that ties the whole thing together and explains why or why not. All right, so for example number two, right, we're asked here to prove that we have, first off, that it's a parallelogram. So uh, I'm going to, let's plot the points first, all right, um, and this part should be a refresher from uh, our previous videos. So let's just plot those points first, though. So E is at 1, 8. We've got 6, negative 1 for F, negative 4, negative 4 for G and negative 9, 5, 4, H. All right, so I'm going to connect the dots here. So again, we have a visualization of what we're looking at here. All right, and let us take the opportunity to try to prove that we have a parallelogram. So I'm going to uh, give you guys a chance to try this one since this is a little bit of a refresher of what we should have done. So take a chance, pause the video, uh, see what you could do, again, using any one of those four options for parallelogram. Personally, again, I like uh, showing that the diagonals bisect each other. I think that's the, the fastest way. But again, any one of those options will do it uh, and give it a shot. All right, so hopefully I took an opportunity to give that one a try. Again, whichever method you use is fine. Uh, I use the midpoints of the diagonals to show that those two things were congruent. Um, I'm sorry, uh, bisectors of each other. So I have the same midpoints, AKA they are bisectors. All right, so for part B, uh, which is asking us to prove that the EFG is not a rhombus, right? So since I know it is a parallelogram, all I gotta do is just show that uh, the properties of a rhombus do not work out. So again, you've got options. Uh, you could show that consecutive sides aren't equal to each other, um, or you could show that the diagonals uh, are not perpendicular to each other, which I think is a slightly faster way. So I'm going to go with that one. 
So in this case here, I'd show that the slope of the first diagonal, which I'm going to say is uh, EG. So we'll say that is, so again, let's just get a visualization for EG. Here it is. Oh, and one other quick thing I, as uh, going through it, if you notice, I accidentally plotted E in the wrong spot originally, so I did make that adjustment. So I do apologize for that part. Right, but here we go. So the slope of that, again, we can just simply count the boxes vertically and horizontally. Uh, so in that case, it goes up 12 over 5. Can't simplify that, so I would just leave that in that term. Uh, slope of the other diagonal, in this case, G, uh, no, sorry, FH, is going to equal, and again, that's this one here. Uh, that's going to be, again, I'm going to go uh, H to F or F to H, it doesn't matter, but I'm going to go down. Uh, in this case, it's down 6, right 15. All right, even if you try to simplify that, like I take a 3 out of both of those, right, I get negative um, 2 fifths. These are not opposite reciprocal slopes. So these are not opposite reciprocal slopes slopes, therefore, again, remember three dots in separate the triangle, it means therefore, abbreviation for therefore, therefore diagonals are not perpendicular to each other. So since diagonals are not perpendicular, then E, F, G, H cannot be a rhombus. That part. All right, let's jump over to example number three here, which is talking about the square. So again, nice thing about a square uh, in terms of its material is that everything has to be shown, right? Uh, we need all the properties of a parallelogram, rectangle, and rhombus, right? So we've got a lot of variations. You can literally choose any of those pieces for any one of those three parts uh, in, in order to show that it is, in fact, um, a parallelogram, a rectangle, and a rhombus all at the same time. Again, my favorite here I have in red is, again, using the diagonals, right? And again, that's going to be perpendicular bisectors that are congruent, a.k.a all three of these formulas, all right? So let's try that one out here for number three. Uh, I should say example number three, and let's show that that is in fact uh, what's gonna happen here. Now, for example number three, it does specify here to use coordinate driving and prove that the square is shown by uh, four sides of equal length and four pairs of perpendicular sides. So again, if the question dictates a specific uh, method in terms of doing that, then, by, then you obviously have to follow suit with what they're telling you to do. Uh, but if it's up to you, then you get to choose which one you want. So in this case, they're telling me I have to do four equal lengths of sides as well as uh, four pairs of perpendicular sides. So let's start off here with the um, uh, distance formula. Again, just for timing purposes here, because we've done a lot of distance formula here, I'm going to uh, just kind of shortcut a little bit and show you just what the the values are going to be instead of plugging it into the entire thing. But uh, again, I'm going to start with A and B, which is this side here. So these two points, again, difference uh, in the X's, uh, that's going to be 6 squared, which is 36, plus the difference in the Y's, which is going to be 8 squared. Um, I'm sorry, I take that back, Re reverse that sentence. Difference in the X's is 8 squared, uh, difference in the Y's is 6 squared. So I get a, a total of a rad 100, which in this case is a simple one to do is 10. Uh, technically, you don't have to simplify the radical because if as long as you show that all the radicals are the same, it would be enough, but that's an easy one to do uh, for that one. So that's the first one. So let's see, BC, right? Again, that's going to be here uh, for this part, uh, B and C. Now I'm looking at these two, right? Again, difference uh, in their uh, X values, which is 6 squared is 36 plus the difference in their y values is going to be 8 squared, which is 64. Again, square root of 100, we just said, was 10. Third side, CD, 
All right, we've got a uh, horizontal change there of looks like for C and D of 8, 8 squared is 64. Uh, vertical change looks like uh, of negative 6, so that's going to be uh, 36. Again, square root of 100 is 10, so everything's looking like it's going to be. So I'm expecting my fourth side to work out here. Let's just double check. Again, uh, change in x's. We've got here that's a total of 6 of 36 plus another 64, because that's 8 squared, and again 100, which is 10. So I see here that all of these side lengths are in fact congruent. So again, that technically all that shows is that it's a rhombus, right? But if I also um, show, well, I should say it shows it's a parallelogram, uh, aka two pairs of opposite sides congruent. But since they're all the same, that's enough to say that it's in fact a rhombus. But I do need one more thing here uh, to show that it is in fact um, also a rectangle, right? And I would need, in that case, they want us to show that all four uh, sides have right angles. So we're just looking for slopes um, from here. Now, again, if this one didn't specifically say uh, all four of them, uh, you could just get away with showing that one pair of angles, uh, our sides are perpendicular, because then if one is, then all four of them must be, since we've already shown that it's a parallelogram. But again, just following the question here, uh, we can plug in what these are. So. Uh, a, B, so A to B, that's a vertical change of 6 over 8, a.k.a. 3 fourths. All right, slope of, uh, let's do B, C next. So that's down 8, right 6. So that's going to be negative 4 thirds. So that shows that these are opposite reciprocals. Slope of C, D. So C to D, so it's down 6, left 8, down 6, left 8, a.k.a. 3 fourths, and slope of DA or AD, same thing. Uh, I've got here, i got positive 8, left 4, I'm sorry, left 6, which gives me a negative 4 thirds, again showing me opposite reciprocals between those as well. So subsequently, we can now make the claim that since all four sides are congruent and all four sides are perpendicular to the adjacent side, then A, B, C, D must be a square because it has all the properties of a parallelogram, rhombus, and rectangle. All right, uh, looking at number four here, um, that's the same type of question, just open-ended for you. Um, I'm going to la leave that one just because uh, this video is starting to get a little long. I don't want to uh, overdo the time of length. But again, just in terms of doing this one, I would recommend personally a uh, midpoint formula to show the uh, diagonals bisect each other. Then I would say slopes to show that the opposite reciprocals, a.k.a. Uh, that they're perpendicular of those diagonals, and then the length of the diagonals uh, to show that they are also congruent. That would be enough to show that it's, in fact, a square. All right. Uh, let's just take a quick look, though, at 5, uh, because now this one here is a little different. They're giving me 3 out of the 4 coordinates. So negative 8, 1 is A. They're giving you uh, B as 3, 6 here. And D is negative 3, negative 10 here. And they're asking where would point C have to be if it's in fact a square. So again, this is the question mark, where is this one? Um, so again, let me just connect these here. So this is what I've got so far, right? So 
uh, if you think about it, you got options. We could think of it as like if we connect this, right, it would be a, a reflection over the line BD, which would be where C would be. Or, right, so we could do that part. Or if I say, well, the slope of AB, right, so a D to C would have to be the same slope. So if you calculated here, right, the slope of AB, right, that's going to be a rise of here 5 and a run of 11, right? So I have that same scenario here. So up 5 over 11 puts me here, right? So subsequently that would be your parallel line this way, right? And if I did the same thing again, AD, B to C would have to be parallel to that also, right? So the slope of AD equals, again, this is down 11, right um, 5, right? So that shows that one. Again, if I did the same thing here, down 11, right 5, it actually lands in the same exact spot. And therefore, if I draw my lines, that happens to be the intersection. So that tells me the intersection of these is C. Now, if I could have simplified these slopes, right, then obviously I want to see where the line intersects, not just, you know, the, where it lands, the point. Um, but in this case, the, over, the overall change was, in fact, that slope. So therefore, it ends up being the same thing. So that is your point C. Uh, and again, they're saying name the coordinate. So C is point, and that is at 8, negative 5 as my coordinate, and that's your answer. All right, so again, take a chance. Uh, go back over anything in the video that you need uh, to take a little bit more time on or work on, and uh, we'll utilize the practice problems for extra practice.